where am I? I start, what happens is as a voter, I get erased. That's why I lose faith in the system. And be am I not here? Are you guys just, what is this for? I, I, I would like to be considered. Um, and uh, I, I remember one time, I don't know if people saw this, Dennis Kucinich was at a debate and I can't, I can't remember uh, uh, who out uh, there were a bunch of people there, at, and uh, uh, Ted Koppel was running the the debate, and he finally came around and he and he talked to all the leading candidates, and then he he, he spoke to Dennis Kucinich and he said, you know, you don't have you have two hundred thousand dollars at the bank and you got one percent of the vote, how are you going to win? And he said, you know, since I've been here, I've been here fifteen minutes. This is the first question that you've asked me, and so far all we've talked about is money. We haven't talked about Tennessee. All we talked about is money and popularity. And and the, the people are nowhere in this equation. And Ted Koppel tried to talk over him. And the, I don't know, maybe somebody in your audience saw this. And the, the, the audience shut Ted Koppel down for three minutes. Wow. Started clapping. It was a galvanizing moment for me. Because they're saying, because the, the, what, what, as voters, we want to be considered. We're just so tired of watching all these lies just get bantered about at our expense on our time. Where are we in the equation? We're, as Democrats, I, I say in the speech, we're, we shouldn't be in the policy business. We're in the people business. Right. That's the business we're in. We should be thinking about people, not policy. People first, and then we'll worry about what are the policies are going to be good for the people. Not pe policy, policy wonks and policy. It's empty. It's, it's, it's empty calories. And, and I would add that to be, you know, to be an effective candidate and to manage your own brand, you have to be authentic. And your true north has to be um, you always speaking to your values and your yeah. principles. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you're a Democrat, they align with the Democratic policy, uh, values and principles. But if you are um, speaking to your values and your principles and not to pull numbers, because all too often people in these equations, like Adam is saying, are relegated to money and pull numbers. And so people end up being equated with pull numbers. People are more than pull numbers run on your values, run on your principles, be authentic. That's what's resonating with uh, voters today. Raise the flag. Valdez, that's a really good point. Thanks for making it. It is. It is. D do, you, do you think that what you're speaking of, sticking true to your brand, do you think that, that um, we saw that in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? I think we did. Yeah, I think, I think she's particularly good at, um, at speaking the truth, representing her values uh in a way that is firm but not alienating but she has great strength and i think that's what the democratic party needs to demonstrate above everything else two things strength and vision that's what we need right now valdez you agree i totally agree i think that that's something that the democratic party um has been lacking in the past both at the national and often at the state and local level and I think a lot of times people vote Republican because they, they, they go after strength. They convey strength. And Adam has a piece that he talks about in his, in his presentation about that. But we either we have a vision, but we don't convey strength or we convey strength without a vision. If you can get the two of them together, it's, a, it's an unstoppable uh, combination, particularly when uh, the end result is something that's going to directly benefit you, me and everyone we know in the 99 percent. It was a, a, a you know, Bill Clinton said. And uh, I, I got issues with the Clintons, of course. Uh, uh, all good progressives should. <laughs> um, but he, he was a smart man, and he was a shrewd, shrewd politician, mm -hmm. and Look still is in his own way. And he, but he said uh, that, that America would rather vote for strong and wrong than weak and right. And I just cannot think of a better, of better evidence than strong and wrong than Donald J. Trump. I mean, he 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 he's evidence that Bill Clinton is 100 percent right. What 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 Republican voters are attracted to, what human beings are attracted to is strength. The aura of strength is very persuasive. So the, the, the Republicans said, here's where the center is. Well, why is it there? Well, because they put it there. Right. And and, right. and, and, and but but we didn't agree on that. But what we've been doing is kind of inching our politics over to the right. Yeah. You notice that? Yes. And then what they do is as we move over to the right, then they move it a little. They move the goalpost. They move it further over to the right. And they get, we need to reclaim the center and we need to definitely first reclaim the left so we can bring balance. Because we, this this game is of, of kind of we, we, we change our political flavor forsake our base and then chase around three to six percent of the electorate every presidential it's crazy absolutely it's, it, and then it, and then what do you work? 
And then what do you hear from the voters? They say, I really see no difference between the two parties. And <laughs> when you're constantly competing to get to as center as possible with being just a little on the left or a little on the right in the hopes of that looking moderate or bipartisan or whatever. Um, all you're doing is like losing that contrast. And people do kind of think, you know, well, what is the difference between the two parties? We know what the, uh, the difference is uh, in the progressive wing. But because the voters aren't always hearing those messages it, that the progressive wing espouses, um, they, they lose that contrast. And then it's just kind of a, a toss up and who they like better and who they'd rather have a beer with. Because they're right. Right. Because they can't tell the difference because they're smart. Because at that point, everything's mashed into this this fake middle. I don't know what it, it does. It's a phantom. And, and because if we don't have a left, a true left, then you can't have a true middle. Right? Wow. And we don't we need to start really announcing who we are on the left. I mean, really, ever since McCarthy, we've been we've been losing on the left. You know, we had a little resurgence there in the 60s. But but really, the true left has been been getting beat up on for a long time. And I think it's time that we reclaimed it. It actually has. And, and, and just, yeah, Oz has got a point here. You're talking about strength, which is something I don't think the Dem Party has shown since I've been paying attention to politics. Um, not very long, but really hasn't had it. Um, and. We're, we're talking about the, the audience is going to, Oz is talking about this, the, the um, McConnell uh, calling uh, us a mob, right? Progressive is a mob yeah. pushing that narrative, right? Yeah. Uh, which is all it really is pushing a narrative that we're this ugly mob. It's that we're angry constituents, agreed, right? Um, no, they're branding. I mean, yeah. Oz is absolutely right. It's brand, stamp. Think about the, yeah. where the word brand comes from is from ranchers. Right. That's when it got started. Mm -hmm. It's it's a stamp. It's something that gets seared into you. That's indelible. That doesn't go away. Right. So they're smart. They but but that's n probably not Mitch McConnell. Uh, th there's the Cato Institute, the Heritage Institute. Oh, yeah. The, the, these people are thinking about brand building. So we get branded a mob and then we're out of control and we're unhinged, all of which isn't a complete lie. Right. So, exactly. And, and all they're doing is, you know, in the past, you know, Adam talks about in his presentation, you know, liberals became a dirty word, right? You're this, like, you're this, you know, you're a liberal. And, you know, we're lim the limousine liberals and the latte liberals and we're the elites and we're the, uh, you know, the academics. We're out of touch from everyday America. That's what they say. That was their talking point to make liberal, the liberal a bad thing. Now, you know, they're talking about rather than talking about, wow, look at everyday people are rising up and protesting about what they are seeing every day in America. They're dismissing that. They're branding it as an angry mob because who's going to be for an angry mob? Nobody. Right. But they're, because they're owning the brand. It's not being what it is, which is that we the people are rising up in disgust and frustration and anger at what's happening to our country. But we're being dismissed as an angry mob because that's the talking point that the Cato Institute puts out, that Mitch McConnell parrots and the media picks up and reinforces. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want to make so a correction. Make up the same effort. We need to start doing exactly what they're doing. We need to do on our side. We need to start branding. We need to start think tanking. We need to start. We need to start yeah. reclaiming our brand from them. So do you right agree on. with Eric Holder? I'm not a fan of Eric, but uh, his words this uh, was yesterday where he changed Michelle Point Obama's statement you, and said we kick him. You kick him in the nuts. Isn't that what he said? He didn't say nuts. You know, he just he said we kick him. him. You know, yeah. he said, he said, you know, and it's he wasn't referencing violence. He was referencing, you know, we uh, it's time for us yeah, to be strong. I, I, you know? I think that uh, I, I don't think I understand what he was trying to do. Um, I, I don't think he did us any favors huh? because if you if you have a party on the if you ha if your opponent knows how to brand you, then anything that comes out of your mouth can and will be used against you. So no, now I just, I just read an article today talking about how there's all the language of violence starting to creep into political differences. And they use that as the headline, as the headliner, as the door into this whole, you know, and Maxine Waters. And so now all of a sudden we're the violent ones. Right. I mean, well, it's the, I'm rubber, you're glue. That, what's interesting about that is that there's you know, you're talking media influence and the progressive in media is not as powerful as corporate media. And, and I don't want to go down that road because we push back and saying, you know, uh, Rand Paul, Heather Hare is already dead. So as far as violence in politics, it happened with the Nazi movement in, in Charleston. So, you know, vi violence is here <laughs> and it was brought on by the right. And we need Democrats to push that. You know, we need them to be strong on that narrative. You know, if you look at who's being violent, it's certainly not the left. Um, so in, but in if, if the, the, here's the thing with that. And I agree, we, we, we can't get pushed around. But and I, I think what Eric Holder was trying to do is play offense. But 
Um, offense is, is a riskier strategy. We ended up on the defense on that, right? We ended up, he ended up having to defend his position of, no, I didn't mean violence. So don't use the word kick. It's just not a good word. What, right? It, it wasn't it, a good choice. A, it wasn't a good choice at all. You're no, right. it's, we know what he's saying. When they go low, we stand strong. Right. We, you know, when we go low, we hold them accountable. You, anything, but, <laughs> anything but talking about physically, you know, it's like, take that off the table. We wouldn't let our kindergarten people say it. Yeah. So don't let our grown people say it. Exactly. And I, and, I, and, and I think the problem is there's nobody, there is nobody inside the party thinking strategically about how we talk about ourselves and, and what we're up to. And so we get these random things that we end up on. We're playing against, like, imagine if you had a product and you had the same product, and the other side had an ad agency, and you didn't. Yeah, basically, basically. They have an ad agency. Right. It's the Cato Institute. It's the Heritage Foundation. It's it's the Federalist Society. They have lots of agencies. And we have Chuck we, and Nancy. We have no one. We got. I mean, and we just got to start playing that way. <laughs> Chuck and Nancy, because they're, they're they're the face of the Wait. Democratic Party, and occasionally we get uh, what? what's his name? Yeah. What? Right. Well, we do have we do have the everyday you know people on social media. And in indivisible yes. groups yes. and Bernie our revolution groups, the only problem for us is that they have one set of messaging that is not yet coming out of the mouths of our uh, national leaders. If we could ever sync those two up, uh, boy, what a unstoppable force we'd be. Yes. All right. Now, I don't want to take too long because this was really, you guys, this is great. And I'd love to have more conversations about this, but we're getting kind of off track here. We really wanted to talk more about what you're going to talk about on Sunday, kind of as a teaser. And, you know, just let me clarify. So this you're, you're doing this to help uh, potential candidates or constituents who may want to be candidates, right? That's right. That's that, that's that's the first the first impulse and the impetus for it was um, I'm hoping that candidates will come and understand, learn about branding, understand um, the difference between just running on your values and understanding how to organize your brand message. So that the, and, and and I would want them to see how effective it is. And I and I do spend a fair amount of time talking about the ways in which our brand has been defined for us, because I think that's a common mistake for new candidates. Um, so I, I talk a, a, a fair amount about that strategy, how to begin to think about it, the position you're in as a candidate and how to start thinking about building your brand, starting with it's a claim of ownership on your most authentic self, who you really are. And then and then I'll, I can help candidates. Put those into words that are that that are honest and persuasive and maybe poetic and and inspirational um so that's part of it that's part of what i'm doing and then i i really do talk a lot about uh what i feel is very important is that we need to make the brand aspirational right we need to i think that all of our brand as the party needs to be aspirational that in that way we're going to start a new conversation with the country we're going to start a new conversation with ourselves with each other about who we want to be. And if that conversation is dynamic enough, let, let Trump have his 30% of the people that are going to vote for him no matter what. <laughs> We're talking to the other 60 or 70% of the people that really want an alternative, a hopeful alternative. Um, and and I so I do spend some time talking about that as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, we've got links to the Eventbrite uh, uh, event uh, on the web, everybody. It's in the description of the YouTube video. Tickets are what? Uh, you've got tickets for this, and how much are they, Valdez? Adam? Ten bucks. Oh, geez. So that's awesome. I mean, if I were a candidate, candidates, you need this help. And um, political consulting does yeah. not cost ten bucks. So you know, I would, I would take this. I'm really encouraging I think reaching out to candidates and saying, look, you know, we tried to schedule this on a Sunday evening after dark so you wouldn't you know it's not cutting into your canvassing time because we all know that knocking doors is the most important thing uh any candidate can do to win their race so we want to do it on a sunday evening and uh i'm really been reaching out if you're a candidate watching this uh please try to make it uh to the event i think it's really going to be worth your time um i know we're about three weeks out from the election but i think we're in the heat of the moment and the most probably important part of the race and uh i think this training and developmental opportunity for candidates couldn't come at a better time that's I agree, and there's there's something I really want to add in there. Um, uh, that that we're not. I'm not coming out uh, against the Democratic Party. I, I want to support the Democratic Party. I think it's our best chance of winning back the uh, the government. I think it, I, it's not that we don't have issues. We we want the Democratic Party to be a better Democratic Party, just 
like we always want it to be better. But this th- this is about I really I'm back. I, I struggled with it, but I'm authentically back in a place where where I, I, I feel that what I want to do is support the Democratic Party um, to be the best party that it can be. And I, and I and and the, as a progressive. And that's what I liked about Valdez. When we met, I was like, oh, you're a real progressive guy working inside the party. Right on. We need a, thousands of those guys. And he was part of my inspiration for coming back uh, because I was like, well, if he could do it, then I should do it, too. Yeah. And I'm really excited because, you know, we have long talked about branding and messaging and communication, even here within the Democratic Party of Oregon. Back when we did our strategic retreat uh, last year, branding and messaging was one of the four big uh, goals that we identified as a strategic goal. And we hired a communications officer and, and we've been doing some really great work to, to make sure that our brand is the, the DPO, the Democratic Party of Oregon brand. It's not defined just by whoever happens to be at the top of the ticket in any given pol- uh, political race or election year. But we have a brand that people recognize as the DPO and that means something and they get it. And they know that when our candidates are running, that um, that's what they're reflective of. And so when I met Adam at this Healthcare for All Oregon, event um i was just so excited about what he had to say once we struck up a relationship and i'm so thankful that he's coming back and bringing his uh political savvy and marketing know-how to um our party and to our candidates because uh, it, like i said it's it's probably one of our biggest uh weaknesses right now we have a great message we've got great values we've got great ideas we just need to be able to market that and communicate it in a simplistic meaningful way uh, so people get behind us, vote for us, and put our folks into positions where they can bring that to fruition. I think that's awesome. Right. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys uh, connected. I'm glad we all connected. And uh, I, I got and two out of three. I, what about us? I, I was just going to say, and if I might just say thank you, uh, because the Democratic Party of Oregon has been promoting this event. They're, you know, it's it's Adam's event, and I've been helping him, uh, you know, or, you know, get it organized and off the ground, but. Thank you to the Democratic Party of Oregon for sharing it and marketing it and putting it on oh, our calendar. Great. Their social. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. awesome. That's really awesome. I, I got to ask two of my three, two out of three of my core questions for you. So what I want to do here is I want to I definitely want to have both of you back on after the 14th and talk right. about what happened, talk about where we go next and, and, and stuff. But I'm going to leave you with this question. I just I want a quick answer from you. And then we're going to talk about your video here. And doesn't the platform the Democratic Party of Oregon platform and, and resolutions and LAIs and all that kind of provide a decent outline of what their brand should be as a Democrat? Absolutely. The, the, those would be, the, you would look at those if you were building on a private side, sec, you would say those are the key attributes, right? So you, you identify two things when you're building a brand. What's the core value, right? The core value proposition, this for that. That's the one. And then you look at all the other pieces and you say, OK, these are the key attributes. How do we represent them? So you're absolutely right, John. Yes, that's how we would do it. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I just wanted to we will lead in with that next time. But I definitely want to hear about the uh, the session and what happened and, and uh, how wonderful it was. Uh, Valdez, thank you for all you do. Uh, Adam, thank you yes. for what you're going to do. Appreciate it. Yeah. And have thank done. you. So thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm glad to be doing this show, man. It's important. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I do if it, you know, otherwise. It's, we, we have a democracy to fix. We have climate change. We've got some stuff yeah, too, right? You got know. a couple little issues. Yeah. So you had talked about a couple of videos that you had produced, and the one that I have pulled up here is We the People. Tell us a little bit about that while I get it framed. Yeah. So um, in 2004, I won the DNC uh, contest with a spot I made with Jefferson Smith when he was executive director of the bus project. We made a spot and we won and it tested really well. And it was a branding spot and I was really encouraged. And so I started to develop a branding campaign uh, for the party um, that I really was wanted to kind of move up the chain. And the, and the Democratic Party of Oregon was really supportive of it. Uh, Neil Pender was ED at the time. He was really supportive and the party just really got behind this idea of, of, of making a commercial that would be the beginning of a brand conversation for the party. And that's this spot. So uh, uh, kudos to the Democratic Party of Oregon for stepping up. Awesome. So here's my only, only I only want to qualify one thing. So originally when I wrote it, it was intended to be a, a really a much bigger budget spot. So we were going to go to, uh, you know, where Americans are archetypes in their native environments, you know, a, a union worker in a steel mill, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 you'll see a guy with a gun, um, you know, talk, uh, a hunter in the forest. Yeah. Well, we couldn't we couldn't do that because we didn't have the kind of money. So 
we just rented a studio and brought the archetypes to us. And so that, that was what we ended up having to do. I but, thought it was very effective. And I thought it right. was even more, I was, it was like more stark. It, it caught my eye. I was like, they, they, they <laughs> totally did that on purpose. They put the hunter, it made it, you know, so I thought it worked. It was great. Yeah, well, thank you. It was great. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I want my Democrats, my, my representatives to be like this. So if we show, so the, you hit it on the head, John. So if we show them that, if we have assets that we can show around to all our candidates and say, this, this is what you want to model. This is what you want to shoot for. If we set the feeling tone, that's as much of what a brand is about as anything is what's the underlying feeling tone that we want to capture that moves people and engages them. And so this spot was very much about also just capturing that feeling tone. Absolutely. Wonderful. Valdez, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have right you on, back thank again. You. And yeah. everybody in the audience, Jilly Love, Schultz, uh, A. A. Mares, hey, how you doing? You guys are nailing, hitting up with all this conversation. Save it. I see your questions. I see your statements. We're going to do it another time. This was just a tease. We'll, we'll talk to Adam after this. They are good. They are valid. Dems do need to grow a pair. We kind of hit that. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll, we'll get that. Hopefully, Adam's going to help work with the language on that so that we can say it differently. But yes, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I talk a lot about strength at this event. I talk a lot about what it, the strength, because that's what people want yeah. from the Democratic Party. So if you want to hear more about it, come to the event. Yeah, and, and just I'll leave you with this in strength. Joni Ernst with a shotgun talking about castrating hogs. That was the Democratic president. Jo Joni Ernst, we run that video in, in, in uh, Iowa. So if, the, if she can get away with that, we can definitely yeah. do what you're talking about. Definitely. We definitely can. Valdez, thank you. Everybody, thank you. Here's the video. Please share, everybody. I believe the time has come. Time to take a stand. To come together. To stand together. I believe it is the job of our leaders to listen. I believe privacy is patriotic. I believe compassion is not conservative. I think economies don't trickle down. Economies are cultivated. Like seeds. Like jobs. New jobs. New industries. A living wage. A, A family wage. wage. I believe a forest can only be healthy when it is protected. We believe energy independence is homeland security. And I think what makes America strong is not only our preparedness for war, but our commitment to peace. 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 I speak out for the common good. The air. The water. The, the land. land. The, the airwaves. airwaves. And as citizens of a democracy, we claim these things. As our public property, I, we, believe, think, us, we, stand, protect, we, participate, think, engage, educate, create, believe, think, speak, we, vote, we, elect, we, the people. It's your country. Take a stand. The Democratic Party of Oregon. We. The. People. Take your stand by logging on at OregonDemocrats.org.